people like it, it's great. And if they don't, we wouldn't change it because we made it with our hearts and souls and it's true. It's a true thing we're doing. In preparation for this conversation, I watched the 60 Minutes interview that you did with Anderson Cooper. Lovely conversation. You know, they give a title to their stories and yours had the word guru in it. He referred to you that way, characterizing you as this kind of person. I mean, that word carries a certain connotation. And I know it was used maybe a little tongue in cheek. I'm not sure. But how how does that word sit with you as as this kind of all knowing, almost spiritual figure? Um, I, have, I think it has to do with the fact that for some reason, and I don't know why, in college, I decided to stop shaving. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you think it's because you have a beard? I think so. I think if I didn't have a beard, they wouldn't call me Guru. <laughs> the book itself reads as sort of a, a spiritual text. I mean, really. Do you have a spiritual architecture to your own life? I'm, I will say I'm a seeker, so I read across the board different practices. If, if we, uh, I'm looking at a bunch of books in front of me now, if you can see the books, you really laugh. It's just... Tell me who they are. Okay, so there's uh, Wherever You Go, There You Are, which is a John Kabat-Zinn book on meditation. Below that is I Am That, uh, Sri Swargadatta Maharaj. Below that is Awakening the Third Eye. There's a book, 101 Things I Learned in Architecture School. It's a book called Entering the Tao. All right. You've made your point. You're a reader and a speaker. <laughs> Those are all of a piece, for yeah. sure. I mean, lots of us can... A seeker is a thing that's sort of... Not to push back on you, but it's, it's, a, it's an easy answer. Lots of people are seekers. Yeah. Do you believe in God? Yes. You do? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I have a knowingness that there is a power greater than us that exactly. seems to animate everything. Fuck yeah. That's my That's belief how too. It. It's absolutely like, real. I couldn't prove it. However, I wouldn't this, expect this you to believe it. I don't believe in religion. World that we're in, this universe that we're in, however it works, I don't think it's accidental. I feel like there's some um, creative energy behind it. We have help. When we're making something beautiful, we have help. We're not working alone. I believe that too. I read that it when just you comes were out of you. producing Johnny Cash near the end of his life with his last albums, that you took communion with him, but that was something that was important to him. Yeah. And, and you were enthusiastic about it. Yeah. And you did it more than once. It became it sort day. of... Ritual, we, we, right. we did it. We did it from the time. I won't take sick. communion because there's certain said, meanings I behind communion. communion. And he's like, "Oh, it's a beautiful practice. Let's do it together." And then we did it together. And I think it would be disingenuous to take communion and, then, and not mean it. I said, "Well, while you're sick, should we just continue?" Specifically, doing it? I don't believe that it's the body and blood of Christ. But so we started doing it every day, and then when we worked together, I would call him every day, and he would say the words. And I would close my eyes and I would visualize. I didn't have the wafer physically with me, but I visualized the whole thing and I experienced it with him every day. And then when he passed, I could still hear him doing it and did it, I would say, for about six months every day with him after. Wow. I think that would change a person to do that. and, and Because it's not... It's not like saying a prayer with someone. I mean, it is a highly mystical Christian ritual whereby yeah. you imagine the wafer you're eating is actually the body of Jesus Christ and the yes. grape juice or the wine is the blood. Yes. Um, you're, you're not a Christian. No. Nope. What, what effect did that have on you, sharing that with him? I'm a believer, you know, I, I, I'm, and I got to share it with him, and he was a believer. Okay. And this was his That's a good way answer. of believing. He experienced so it with Johnny Cash. I, I got to experience his way of believing with him. And it was beautiful. And I and I truly believe it enriched my life. It's not calculable how powerful it felt. What a good guy. I like him. Is art unfulfilled still worthwhile? And I'll, I'll say more. I, I asked this... Um, this is just a totally selfish question. 
but yeah. I don't know if I'm asking for forgiveness from you in some weird way. I don't know. Um, I had to. I forgive you. I Thank you. Are you sure? <laughs> I forgive you anyway. I, no. <laughs> Whatever it is, I forgive you, but do ask the question. I took a sabbatical because yes. the news was burning a hole into my soul. And I decided that on that sabbatical, I needed to learn how to play a particular piece of music. You know, I'm not a piano player. I like played, you know, as a child. But I saw this, um, f the film Nomadland with Francis McDormand. And the guy who did the soundtrack, I always mess his name up. Um, Luda, Ludovico Ainaudi. Amazing. And, oh my gosh. He's amazing. He's so amazing. And um, I could not get that music out of my head. So I was like, I need to try to play this music. Yeah. And I hired a teacher and I wow. practiced. <laughs> and then my sabbatical ended and I had not mastered this piece of music. And I haven't tried since because I'm sort of embarrassed that I never did it. And so I guess my question is, is setting an artistic goal and not meeting it, is there still creative value in it for a moment? Absolutely. And I don't know that setting a goal is the way to do it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of our culture is structured around that, huh? Yep. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't, I tend not to set goals. Yep. Really? I feel like a goal could be a limitation. Right. But I can remember, uh, big successful artist because the art uh, is done when the art is done in a band saying to me <laughs> i'm excited about our next album I haven't started writing any songs yet but we want it to be this kind of sci-fi punk rock thing and it's like okay i'm listening and then i said what happens if the best songs you write turn out to be more like neil young's harvest and like oh that'd be great <laughs> okay so then it's like having the goal it's like that's not going to help you get there it's more like start finger painting and see what happens did anything come from your piano experience that was like, did you feel more connected to the piano? Did you feel like you liked hearing playing the notes? Was it a nice meditation being at the piano? Can you go back to playing the piano for five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, whatever you pick the window without having this goal, but just, I'm gonna have fun making music for 10 minutes a day and see where that goes. That might be a really nice gift to yourself. And, and also you forgive me for not having me. Yes, of course. Yes. You are forgiven. <laughs> it's so funny. It's, I, I often say things that I have no... Um, authority? Yes, I have no authority in granting Mandate? permission, but I do it because just to last. break the spell in, in, in the artist's head. I, an artist was telling me a story about, yeah, I was... I hang out with my friends and we're out, we're having fun and I have an idea for a song. And I don't want to like, you know, step away from them and write down the idea, I'm kind of embarrassed. And it's like, no, you have to do that. This isn't, it wasn't even an artist I'm working with. I said, no, I give you permission that when a song comes, you're allowed to do that. I'm giving you permission from this day forward, you can do that. Now it's ridiculous, I have no authority over him. He knows I have no authority over him, but somehow hearing it, it's like, it's like a key to a prison door opening. Okay. So I'm very free with sharing the keys to the prison doors. It's the beard, man, it's the beard. Told <laughs> This book has been a big hit. Have you been overwhelmed by the response? And what have you heard from people? I'm delighted and surprised. I, I could never imagine, because I, I think it's a strange book. I feel like based on the questions you're asking, it's a strange book. I think strange is the best, in my opinion. <laughs> I didn't know who would like it, but I knew I wanted it to exist. It's the book that I wish I had when I was young. And it would be a good thing if one person told me they loved the book and it changed their life. It would have, I don't know if it would have been worth eight years of my life, but it would have definitely felt good to at least know at least somebody it, it did what it was supposed to do. I was also, um, I was in a fire maybe six months before the book came out. And I, I was in a fire and I was sleeping, second floor of a house. Um, my wife and child got out. My wife said, fire, get out. I oh my God. heard this 
and thought, okay, it's a fire. She's going to take care of it. I'm going back to sleep. And I went back to sleep. She was outside. And then I heard her screaming outside for help. And then I went to the window to say, stop screaming.